What do you think about the words, in God we trust, being on our currency? Do you think it's a fundamental violation of separation of church and state with the government imposing its religious views upon all people? Do you think it's a fairly innocuous thing that doesn't mean much at all and may as well stick with it? Or do you think, as I do, that the presence of those words is actually a remarkably powerful model of what it means to embrace the idea of faith, which the vast majority of Americans do, with more than 85% of us believing in God or some higher power, without making a decision about what spiritual or religious path is right for the majority of us. Now, this is nothing new. The truth is, we've been in and or out of court around this issue for years. Only this week, a new suit was filed when a Los Angeles attorney, Michael Newdow, brought a case in Ohio. That's right, Michael Newdow, he's done this before, he always loses, but he just can't take no for an answer. I would actually submit that when case after case and court after court keeps telling you you're wrong, especially when, as we'll see in a minute, the Supreme Court has ruled on this, at some point you have to wonder, who's the real fanatic here? Who's the one really practicing or trying to practice coercion here? The people who support the words in God we trust on the currency? Or the folks like Michael Newdow who keep dragging the rest of us into court? Now, a bit of background, because it is certainly true. This was something that was added to U.S. currency in two stages. In 1864, the words in God we trust were marked on our coins. And it wasn't until 1955 when those words were added to the paper currency that we use. Again, 1955, height of the Cold War, a time we were very conscious of wanting to claim our religious identity as opposed to the communists where we were locked in that Cold War. So it's also when under God got added roughly to the Pledge of Allegiance. Clearly, these were both times America was trying to affirm its religious basis without claiming any particular religious faith. In between, there were people like Teddy Roosevelt who opposed the language, saying that having in God we trust married mammon, money, and everything that was unspiritual and anti-spiritual to something that was basically so physical. Fairly hard line to draw, uh, kind of a tough division between the physical and the spiritual, and one which, especially today, most of us know that from church and mosque and synagogue to yoga studio and gym, we find spirituality in lots of places, often very physical, and our physical efforts and exertions often lead us to real spiritual insights. So I actually think this is a good thing to have this on the money, and I think that the fact is the Supreme Court decided already back in 1983 that it absolutely should be, with the justices saying, look, don't complain about this even if you're not particularly religious, because the term has lost almost all religious significance. Well, I think the court reached the right decision, but for the wrong reason. I think having the words in God we trust has profound religious significance. But it's a kind of religiosity that can be shared by people of all faiths, however defined. No, it doesn't capture all the needs of all Americans, because about 15% of us do not believe in God or some higher power. But there are times when majorities without stripping away the rights of minorities, need to find language that binds them together beyond the particular expressions they embrace. And especially in this world, where people so often confuse their particular path to God or no God with the only intelligent path one should follow, the fact that we have found language on our national currency which proclaims what more than 85% of us fundamentally believe in one way or another, without trying to rule on how it should look in any of our lives, I think that's a profound insight and one we would be really wrong to let go of anytime soon.